All right, now that you got all these layers cut out, what we're going to do is we're going to glue them all together, all to each other. Um, and the way that we're going to use that is by using DAP Contact Cement. This is a can of DAP Contact Cement. Uh, you can find this at Lowe's and Home Depot, pretty much most hardware stores. I use the original, some people like the gel, but I personally prefer the original as well as I got this from Home Depot for the large can because I save money that way but to save even more money what you want to do is try and find this at Walmart they sell them in a smaller can for about six dollars six seven I think it comes out to seven dollars exactly but if you buy it from Walmart it is actually a little bit cheaper as well as since they come in a little can they don't oxidize as fast as this can does because I usually can't go through the whole DAP can before it starts oxidizing a little bit and therefore wastes a little bit of money. So if you have the option, try and get it from Walmart. My Walmarts right now have been sold out for months, I guess because people also found out that it's cheaper at Walmart, so everybody wants to do that. In order to use DAP contact cement, what you have to do is you have to pick it up and you have to shake it up. There's different ways to shake it up and stir it and everything, but you want to get everything moving freely. And what you want to do is open the can. Before you open the can though, especially on a project such as a shield, comparatively to swords, is you want to have the room well ventilated. I'm going to have my, my windows open to my right and my door open to my left as well as this air conditioner has been going because it's summer in Texas. I know the air conditioner can be loud on video sometimes, but it is summer in Texas. I don't have a choice at this point. I'm going to open my windows and my door. We're going to pop this thing open. We're going to start dapping the shield. But uh, specifically with dap on shields, is you're going to have to cover all like two sides of four of these and one side of two of these in dap. Just cover it in which case that's going to be a lot of adhesive fumes, which is why I am definitely saying open your windows, open your doors, especially for this specific kind of project. With a sword, you don't have to worry as much. You'd still very much suggested to do it as compared to with a shield. It's, it can be quite fumy. All right, so next up what we're gonna do is we're going to open up the can. It's going to look something like this, kind of this yellowish color. Take one of these pieces of scrap that we have that normally you'd either throw away or you'd use as like a pommel cap or something on a sword. But uh, for this specifically, we need a brush in order to brush this stuff on. If you use a normal kind of brush with hair or of some sort, the dab's going to get in it and then it's not going to come back out. And you're out a brush and some money. This was going to be thrown away anyways. So super cheap and since I have a big can what I can do is have a big surface to brush with. So here's my brush. I can literally dip it in my can and then just spread it over. What you want to do is uh, to spread it not super thin but also don't leave it globby and thick. You're going to just brush it on kind of like you would paint in a fashion because if you glob it on there, there's going to be a weird texture to it and it's going to dry really slow. And if you leave it on too thin, it's not going to put together just like paint. It wouldn't cover something if you left it on too thin. Sometimes you have to do two coats with that. That's not a necessity. What you want to do as well is you want to kind of follow the natural curve of the foam. If it was perfectly flat, you don't have to worry about it. But since it's curving up like this, I'm definitely going to dap the inside of here. This will be my top layer, so I only have to dap one side of it. You're going to dap both sides of the rest of them. Because what dap does is whenever you spread it over it, it needs time to dry. You spread the dap over, you wait for it to get tacky. The amount of time that it takes to get tacky here in Houston, Texas is usually about 5 to 10 minutes. It says 30 minutes on the can, but you really don't need that long. You really just need to wait until it gets dry and tacky. And that's with our weather, with our humidity, with sunlight and everything, it's just about 5 to 10 minutes. That's where I live specifically. It might be different depending on where you live. If you dab just one side and one side everything, you put 
uh, the three pairs together and then you uh, sorry you dap the three wait for it to dry put them together dap the other sides wait for them to dry put them together if you dap it all at once you wait for it to dry all at once and then you put it together all at once and it saves on a lot of time if you're working on a strap shield wait until later to end the video to see what I have to say about that because this is specifically what you do for a punch shield. You don't want to put it all together just yet if you're using a strap shield. The globbing it on would kind of look something like this and be all globby areas. But what you want to do is you want to spread those globs out. Spread them over the shield to where it's more of a smooth texture. More so a little bit like more so a little bit like this. Still some globby spots in there that I need to get out, but I'll do that a little bit later. This is kind of what the end result looks like got it all dapped on one side and this is just going to be the top layer I'm going to work on the back layer next so since it's going to be the top and the back I'm only doing one side of the top and the back the rest of them I'll do both sides Okay, this will be the back. Now we'll be doing the inner parts, which will be both sides. Alright, so this is where it gets messy because I'm going to have to hold it up and brush it on. Like, if you don't want it to be messy, you can just do the method that I said before that would take longer, but it would be less messy. And in order for it to dry correctly, we're going to have to set it up against something like this. It's because if you lay it down on the ground, it'll try and, for one, stick to the ground. It'll also make your ground all messy, uh, and it won't dry properly. So you have to set it up on its side like this, leaning up against something. In which case, I'll just lean it up against my chair back here.
All right, and with that, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and wait five or 10 minutes for it all to dry, possibly longer, depending on where you live and whatnot. And then we'll go ahead and put them all together. All right, now that the layers are dry, we're just gonna go ahead and stick them together. We're gonna start with the inners. Be sure to line up the edges as best as you can. Remember to stick them together with the curves towards each other. Line them up as best as you can because you don't want to be wasting any foam for later. And take away from the width of your shield. Press it together, squeeze out all that air. I'm not going to bother pushing it together too hard now, just so that you don't mess up the dap on the outside or anything. Um, we're just sticking them together for now. I'm going to grab the other two double-sided dap, stick them together, curved side going inwards towards each other. out all that air. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the two that we just put together, we're going to put them together as well. Squeeze out all that extra air. Now we got four layers together, but since we dap both sides of everything, now we're going to put on the front and the back, which are only dapped on one side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to press down on it really hard, but to get that much pressure over this wide space isn't going to do all that good with just hands and that much pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it on the ground and I'm going to step on it. Just kind of push my feet around to squish this all together. Alright, there you go. You got all six layers put together. They're not perfect, so what we're gonna do later is we're gonna take a bandsaw and shave off to where it's smooth and uh, all the lines match a little bit better. For people who want to build a strap shield, uh, what you would do is you would get to either four fourth layer or fifth layer that's stuck together, and you would cut two little slits for the hand, right here and right here, and for the forearm here and here. You cut them all the way through the foam, just slits, just little like cuts in them, all the way through. And then you would grab a piece of cloth, or most people use a belt because it has the buckle on there to where it's adjustable. And you would run one side of the belt through here, one side of the belt through here, and same with this side, one side here, one side here. And then the buckles and the other side of the belt will show up on this side, they pop out this side. And then you go ahead and strap them together and then you lay on your fifth and sixth layer or just your sixth layer over those belts so that you have foam in between the leather and your opponent if you bash them or the weapons hitting them and everything that it's you're still making contact with foam and not those leather or cloth straps.